Hi guys, Mike here. Welcome to episode 8 of the Endless Runner mini-series. In this episode, we are going to implement the lane switching functionality of the running character. So let's get started. To visually show how to implement lane switching, let's open up our floor tile for a second, go into the viewport and have a look at these three arrows. What the character needs to do, he's starting in the center lane. The character needs to be able to switch to the right, from the right to the center, from the center to the, the left, and so on. So what we need for this are the positions, especially the Y position, which in the left lane will be minus 325, the center lane has a Y value of 0, and the right lane has 325. So these are the, the values that we are going to need later on when the actions of move left, move right are pressed. And we need to save those values in an array in the game mode so that the character or the actions from the character when, we, when he moves left, moves right, that he can access this. And why the game mode? Because in the game mode we are spawning the floor tiles and they have access to these arrows. So we could go an easy route and just copy these values and create an array in the game mode and set them via blueprints, but never hard code any values. And this might change in the future. You might create your own floor tiles where the, the Y value would be different. So we want to get these values from an initial floor tile that we create in the game mode and then get these three values and put them in the array. So let's go into our code and just implement it the way I just mentioned. Okay, so here in our game mode, what we need is another U property. We make it, well, let's copy this. And it's gonna be a T array of value float and we will call it lane switch values. So what do we need to do? In our initial floor tile values, we need to create an initial floor tile, get the Y values from the three lane arrows and add it to the array. And for that, we need to change the add floor tile function to return the tile that we create here. So let's do this first. Let's change the signature of our add floor tile and add a floor tile pointer as the return value. And what I was wondering is I used floor tile and floor tile here and not forward declaring it. And it seems like Rider has automatically included it. So let's just forward declare it here and get rid of the include floor tile. And now that's a lot better. So we change the signature here. Let's copy this, go into our CPP, change this. And, and the way we do this now is first we need to include our floor tile that we can get access to the function again. And what we do is under here, return our tile. So this could either be a null pointer or it could actually be the tile that's been spawned. And if for any reasons the world does not exist, let's return null pointer here to satisfy compiler issues we would have. So let's implement our initial tile. Let's go up in here, we call, define a pointer, we call it tile, and we say add floor tile, and if tile, we then add the values now to the array. So it's the lane switch values dot add. And we have our tile. And the tile has the left lane. And it's the get component location that we need and the Y value. And the same thing goes for the center lane and the right lane. So now we have all the three values. We didn't hard code anything. And one thing that you can make sure of that the values are correct, let's do a for loop 
and just print out these in the log. So we're going through each value and printing a UE log statement. Log temp, make it warning so that it's yellow, give it a text, call it lane value, and now we can pass in a float with percentage f and add the value over here. Let's compile this and see how it looks once we start the game. So my editor crashed. Sometimes it happens that when you compile new ch changes in your code that sometimes Unreal crashes out of nowhere. This seems to be normal, so just don't send the errors, just cancel it and restart the editor and then it should work fine. So let's have a look at our output log, clear the log, hit play, and you can see we have minus 325, 0 and 325. So it works. Now we got these three values that we need. And the next step that we'll be implementing our character. And in our run character, we are actually creating some blueprint functionality. We're needing a timeline. So in that timeline, let's open up the character, delete all this, right click, add timeline. We will call it switch lane timeline. And what you can see here is we have a play from start, update and finished. So what we are going to do now in C++ is we are creating a blueprint implementable event that will call the play from start. Then we create a blueprint callable or two blueprint callable events for update and finished. And let's implement the timeline first. So the length will be 0 0.1. We will make it a float, call this lane val. Add a key, which is at zero. It has the value zero. And we add another key, which at the time 0 0.1 has the value one. And what you can do is click these two buttons, then you frame in to the curve. So we will have just a linear curve from zero Let's put it to zero to one. Compile it, save it, close the timeline. And now it's time to go back to our code and implement those methods in our character. So in our run character, we need three U functions. So we make them in the public section, U function, blueprint implementable event and give it a category of lane for example and we call this void change lane so this function will be implemented in blueprints and not in C++. And just as a side note, if you don't know what I'm doing here, what blueprint implementable event means and so on, I have a video on u functions Go have a look there. I will explain every kind of type there is and how U functions work. So just in case you haven't seen that episode yet. And then we need another function. This will be blueprint callable and has the same category. And this will be called change lane update. And this one gets a float value as parameter, copy this and call this change lane finished. And we need to implement both of these. And let's put them, let's say after the tick and compile it and let's go to blueprints after it's compiled. So in our blueprint, let's call event change lane. This is how you implement those events in blueprints. Let's play from start 
and the update we will call change lane update and in and pass the float value in there and then call change lane finished and this is the timeline so we are actually having blueprint stuff the timeline for example which is called by a implementable event that we can call from C++ and it calls our native C++ functions update and finished. And this is a good way to really implement things like these when you use timelines or other visual stuff. So it's not really creating only C++ and only blueprints. A good mix of both is really the best thing. So let's save it and go back to our code and implement these. So for implementing the lane switching of the character, we need two U properties called current lane and next lane. And you will see shortly how we are going to use these. So let's implement these U property. It's going to be visible instance only. These are values which are not supposed to be edited in any way. And in case we need to access it someday from blueprint, let's make it blueprint read write and it's going to be in 32 and it's called current lane and let's copy these both values and call it next lane equals zero and the current lane equals one so let's go into our cpp file and start implementing it okay so how is this going to work it's better to put them down here so this is going to work when we click move left like the a key and d for the move right we will need to call the change lane and the change lane needs to act on the next lane so basically the next lane would be the current lane minus or plus one based on if we are moving left or right and then we are calling the change lane function, which is the event that we implemented in blueprints with the timeline. And in the update method, we are going to use the current lane to set lerp between the, the values and set the actor location. And once the timeline is finished, then the current lane will be the next lane. So all this theory behind us, let's just implement it. So, so let's implement the move left. We say next lane equals, and for left it's minus one, so it's current lane minus one, but we need to clamp it between zero and two because it isn't allowed to go beyond two or be uh, or below zero, and this is why we use the fmath clamp functions for it. We say current lane minus one and clamp it between zero and two. And then we call the change lane function. Let's copy this, remove this and implement the move right function, which is the current lane plus one. So let's implement the update and finished. In the finished, it's simple, let's start with a simple one. Current lane equals next lane. So now the heart of all the change lane update method. So let me type this in and then I'll explain what's happening. So what we first need is an F vector and get its location. So we need the capsule component which is the root of the character and get its component location. And of course we need to give the vector a name and call it location. So now we have its location and basically the character needs to move from its current position to the next the position of the arrow of the next lane and in the time basically when the timeline runs in that linear fashion. 
So it's going to be the actor location will be set based on an interpolated value between the current location and the location where it's supposed to be. So we need to change or calculate a new Y value for that location. And for that, we need access to the error component Y values that we set in that array from the game mode. But right now we don't have the game mode, so we need to add it as well as a U property. We can make this private. U property, visible instance only, class A endless. Let's copy this. Game mode base, run game mode. So this is similar like we did in the floor tile. So in our begin play method up here, we are getting the game mode. Let's copy this from the floor tile. It's gonna be the same. And import your gameplay statics. So now that we have the game mode, then what we can do is in our update function, say location, the y value equals and then the interpolation. So we use the fmath lerp function for that and call our run game mode the lane switch values and then we access the current lane. Now you didn't convert the dot to the arrow. So in switch mode, copy this. So we are interpolating between the y value from the current lane to the y value of the next plane and then the value to interpolate it by is the value that's passed in from the timeline. So this is basically how the calculation works and then we need to set the actor location and pass in our location. And if you see the green squigglies in writer this means this value could be a const value because we are not changing it, so just add a const value. So to recap how this works is we get the position of the character and then interpolate y value based on the, the current lane y value and the next lane y value based on the float value that we get from the timeline. And then we set the actor location again. And after the timeline is finished, then we need to set the current lane to the next lane because we moved there. And this is how moving left and moving right works. Let's compile this and see if it works. Unreal crashed again, which is a bit annoying, but let's ignore that and go to our editor and let's hit play and type in the D key or the A key. And you can see he's now changing the lanes. And if I click A again, it doesn't go beyond the left lane. And if I click D, it doesn't go beyond the right lane. So now lane switching works. And I guess that's it for this episode. And in the next episode, we are going to implement our first obstacle. We are creating a base class for it and then adding it on those lanes and calculating based on percentages to spawn it on a left, center or right lane. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I gladly answer them. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead, please subscribe that you can get notified once new episodes come out and to be really updated, click the bell so that you can really know when new episodes come out. Then I guess I see you in the next one.